All right, so I got something to tell you all really quick before this video starts, and for all the people who want to skip this little advertisement or whatever you want to call it, I'll have a timestamp. Um, basically, I spent a lot of money recently, $350 worth to be exact, on some artwork for t-shirt designs because a lot of you all have been asking me to bring t-shirts back. But at the same time, I was kind of wondering, should I wait till October or should I kind of show it off early? So if you all would like to see it early, if this video hits 4,000 likes for the first part, at the finale of this playthrough, I will reveal the new t-shirt design and release a campaign so that if you all would like to get a t-shirt, then, you know, you can get it early before uh, October, which is when I actually plan to show this off. But anyway, we'd love to hear your feedback and, uh, you know, take some guesses on what you think it is and uh, enjoy the video. Hey, what's up everyone? Kobanamani456 here today, presenting to all a new playthrough for the Road to Sonic Mania as we are going to be continuing on and playing Sonic CD. So I know you're probably thinking, wait, Kobe, what about Sonic 2? Isn't that next? Well, it's kind of hard to say, because if you look at the ending of Sonic 2 and the beginning of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, both games tie together, so it kind of makes you wonder where the Sonic CD sit. Well, CD was in development at the same time as Sonic 2, Sonic 2 being done by Yuji Naka, and then Sonic CD being done by Oshima. And while CD did come out after Sonic 2, you know, if you look at how the story goes and how the gameplay is in this, it kind of feels like Sonic CD actually happens right after Sonic 1. So, chronologically, I believe this game happens in between Sonic 1 and 2. Whatever it is, you know, let me know down below what you all think. Uh, Sega hasn't really given a clear timeline about it. I don't think they really care. But, as always, if y'all are excited and want to keep on seeing more of this series, smash that like button for me, fam. Really, really helps out tremendously. And let's see if we're going to feel like goal of 3,000 likes for the first part. But, uh, anyway, without any further ado, let's go ahead and start this game. And uh, yeah, we are playing the Christian Whitehead version. This is basically oh, cut them. Alright, so here we are, going to Palm Tree Panic Act 1. And this is actually one of my favorite opening stages in the Sonic series, as it just gives this really cheerful feel, you know? And if you actually play with the Japanese and European soundtrack, it just accentuates that vibe even more. But anyway, we are playing with the Christian Whitehead version of this game, and there are a lot of improvements over the original. We'll talk about that in just a sec, but first we're gonna take a blast to the past, 88 miles per hour, and actually go to the past of Palm Tree Panic. So the biggest, uh, you know, thing about this game that differentiates it from the main Sonic trilogy is that there is actually time travel, which is quite an interesting mechanic because um, your decisions will actually decide what happens um, with the level design, what happens later on with um, the environment and whatnot. Like, it, it's all about your decision making that, um, you know, decides what path you go on in this game. And because of that, it actually um, introduces, you know, some, I don't know, some pretty cool replay value because you may want to go back and actually get a bad future or whatever so you can play, you know, a stage with different level design or whatever. There's that really cool incentive, you know, just increasing replay value. And I think that's really, really awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, it differentiates itself from the others. And I really like it a lot. 
So right now what we're going to do is we're going to destroy this Eggman generator. So there's one in Act 1 and in Act 2. Destroy all of them and you will, uh, what is it? You will uh, get a good future. If you don't, you'll get a bad future. Or there's an alternative. You can actually jump through the special stage rings at the end if you have 50 rings and go to the special stage. So these are actually quite different from uh, what we have in Sonic 1. And uh, it's it's kind of interesting how they work. They're all 3D, but uh, I don't know. Just It's kind of a little bit trippy. It's hard to actually judge distance or whatnot, at least in my opinion. But that's the thing. I've always had a problem with judging distance. So, all right, those black marks or whatever, those actually do hurt you. So do be careful about that. Um, see here, though? See how it works? It's just kind of weird. I don't know, like, how Sonic moves and whatnot. I, I can't really say I like these special stages that much, but, uh, we're gonna try here, still, you know, even though I just got hit again, god dang. Come on, boy. Alright, there you go. Alright, there you go. And we can kind of pull back, too, so I guess that helps as well, so it's not horrendously bad, but... See here, it kind of speeds up over time as you keep on running through the stages. Now, if you jump into the water, you actually lose time. Um, later on, if you are running short on time or whatever, you'll actually be able to uh, grab one of the UFOs that will uh, let you, um, you know, get a little bit more extra time. All right, so there we go. That's one there. All right, we got one more. It's just this blue one right here. So let's go ahead and uh, destroy that. And uh, there we go. Get ourselves our first time stone. So I'm pretty sure there's seven? I'm not sure, I can't recall. Because I've actually never collected all the time stones, I just prefer doing the generators, but... Right now I'm just showcasing the special stage for you guys, and god dang, that 90s background! <laughs> That's crazy, that is like super, super 90s, holy crap. Well, I mean that's when this game came out. But uh, anyway, now we're going to Act 2. I guess I should go ahead and talk about the uh, differences between this and the original. So as you all can see, this is widescreen HD and it does not look stretched by any means at all. It is gorgeous. Um, and uh, one thing is that he fixed the spin dash. The spin dash is no longer the Sonic CD one that was kind of jank in some ways. Um, you know, you had to charge it up for a little bit and you're probably wondering why am I doing this right now? You actually have to um, get yourself enough speed so that you can go time travel because if you get stopped or whatever um, it'll basically cancel out the time travel and you will lose um, your chance to actually get it. You'll have to find another uh, goal post so kind of annoying and uh, that's where one of the biggest improvements happened for this game. So uh, Christian Whitehead not only did he fix the spin dash and the physics he actually fixed the collision detection because Sonic CD was actually my least favorite game um, in the classic Sonic games when I first played it on Sonic Gems collection because it was so flawed. Like, you know, here we have a character that can run supersonic speeds and whatnot, and then he has a new move called the Super Peel Out to where he can do like a figure eight and whatnot. But here I am always getting stopped because whenever he just touches anything, like any little thing, he will lose all of his momentum and just get stopped to a halt. And it just really made it hard to enjoy CD as much as, you know, I do with this. So the game basically went from, you know, being my least favorite out of the classic Sonic games to being, you know, my pretty much one of my favorites. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to actually say where it is because I know, uh, what is it? I wanted to do a top five on classic Sonic games, so I'll save that for later. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's basically how it works. And uh, see there, look at that. We can go to the next one if we want to. So, I don't know. Maybe I will get the time stones. If I can manage to do these special stages fine, I may just do it. Uh, but yeah, the collision detection being fixed though was just phenomenal. And then another thing too that uh, happened as well, uh, we actually have the option between the uh, US and the Japanese soundtracks, which is really cool that uh, you know we were given the option to decide. Now see there, whenever I jump to the water, yep, lose rings. and. These just get way more difficult, too, over time. And because, you know, you do speed up and whatnot, later on, it just makes it even harder to control this blue son of a gun. But all right, there we go. That's one hit there. All right. Got to make our jump small. All right, bump into the bumpers so we don't bump to the water. All right. I'm actually... Th I think this is the best I've ever done. And right when I say that, I miss this dude. Nice. Okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, that's one. Okay. Crap. Crap, 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 crap. See there? 
you lose a lot of time if you stay in the water for too long. But, uh, I'm trying to... Oh, there he is, just chilling right there. Are you kidding me? Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm running out of time now. All right, now I can either go get that time one, or I can uh, run here and get that UFO, but I missed it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get time, so I can get a little bit extra. We got another chance of getting this guy. Oh my God. Oh my God, there we go. Nice, woo! All right, so second one acquired. Yeah, it's cool that the special stages are 3D and all that stuff. Um, but man, <laughs> that was, I was actually getting a little bit nervous there. But if I can actually, for the first time, get the time stones through special stages, that would be pretty interesting. But like I said, I'm still going to do the generator route because that's just the more reliable way in my opinion. But now, we are going to the good future and I'm actually going to shut my mouth so you all can listen to this music because it is just so exciting. Or not because then the invincibility theme is going to come in and just kind of ruin it. And while I do like the invincibility theme, it pales in comparison to what the actual stage theme is. Alright, but see here because we destroyed all the generators and everything, you know, we got uh, all the animals all happy and whatnot. Alright, so go ahead and while you got invincibility, take this dude out. Work that sucker to death. Alright, yeah, work that sucker to death. Yo, I love this. I, I love the music so much, but now I can be quiet. So good, man. <laughs> but anyway, that wraps it up for Palm Tree Panic, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button. And next time, we will be going to Collision Chaos and the Road to Sonic Mania. So I'll see you guys then. Peace, Republic of Kobanermites, and take care.